constituency in Nairobi, retired President Mwai Kibake being elected for a constituency in Nairobi. But sadly for us, we have been moving in a direction that is very dangerous for Kenya, very dangerous, where you don't wait to know what somebody's political thought is. If you are speaking to somebody with the name Munyao, you think Munyao will vote for Wiper, isn't it? Which is stupid thinking. If you are dealing with Rono, the automatic assumption is Rono is going to vote for Jubilee. Okay? But we have Ronos who will vote for Wiper. We have a Rono who will vote for another political party. And in any case, political parties are not supposed to be personal properties. They are supposed to be the property of Kenya, not personal properties. The reason I'm bringing this up is because we are going to have in a few months. It is important that we give each other space because none of us is going to leave Kenya. I'll give you a very short story about myself. Me from Aturukana. Nothing biological that distinguishes Aturukana from Ameru. Nothing biological that distinguishes a Kalenjin from a Luo. What distinguishes us in terms of those ethnic identities is our culture, our way of life, cultural practices, traditions, and customs. That is what distinguishes us. Otherwise, we are the same human beings. We share blood groups. Genetically, we are similar. And when you study the genetic makeup of the human population, all over the world, not just in Kenya, all over the world, every human being on earth, I am an anthropologist, that's why I talk about these things. Every human being on earth has some African gene. Every human being on earth. May they be Americans, may they be Britons, may they be Germans, may they be Indians. Each one of us on earth has some African gene because scientifically we originated from this continent and then started migrating in other parts of the world. Science is different from religion. So please don't seek to contradict me by telling me the Bible says you are created in the Middle East. Okay? I'm talking science, not religion. And science again provides us with evidence that we have intermarried, intermarried throughout human history. Throughout human history, we have intermarried. The boundaries we are trying to create in this country and have been trying to create in terms of ethnicities are simply nonsensical. They are not supported by scientific evidence. If you look at names, for example, you will have the name Maina among the Luya. Am I right? You will have the name Maina among the Kalenjin. You will have Maina among the Abagusi. You will have Maina among the Gekoyo, and so on and so forth. How did that name travel? How? We didn't sleep, dream, dreamed about the name Maina in order to name our children Maina. Those names came about because of intermarriages. Human beings move. We move. Now, when we come to building our nationhood, the driver 
of nationhood as an identity will have to be psychological. The driver. In light of our historical circumstances, in light of our knowledge, we start looking at each other as Kenyan, not as members of given ethnicities. The ethnicities will not die, they will remain because they are useful identities. If you look at a human being, starting with yourself, you have the following identities. You are either male or female, am I right? And that is the only biological identity that you have, being male or female. The next identity, you have a name. Have you ever met a human being who doesn't have a name? Hata ngombe tunazipatia majina. Sivo. And we trace the ancestries, those of us who keep livestock. Okay? After your name, you belong to a family. You belong to a clan. You belong to Mlango, so to speak. You belong to an ethnic group. You belong to a county. You belong to a location, a division. All those are identities. You belong to Kenya, that is another identity. You belong to the African continent, that is another identity. And you belong to the world, that is another identity. Human beings, by definition, have multiple identities. And everybody in the world has the identities I have spoken of. Everyone in the world. Somebody is born as an Englishman or English woman, that is an ethnic identity. They are members of a part of Britain called England, that is an identity. They belong to that country called Great Britain, that is also their identity. And therefore, we are not saying that by building nationhood, we shall be sacrificing our ethnic identity. You will keep your ident ethnic identity. What you are most likely to lose in your lifetime is your mother tongue. And that should not worry you. Because a language dies a natural death the moment it becomes non-functional. It dies. If you listen to our children today, Regardless of where they are located in Kenya, they are now referring to their grandmother as Shosh. Have you noticed that? Why? Why? Because they belong to the digital technology. They are watching television. And there is a popular program on citizen television on Sundays known as Mother-in-Law. So they are picking the word shosh from mother-in-law. And what that means is that shosh in your mother tongue, that word will eventually disappear. It will die. Okay? But you will have created another word, shosh. Okay? In the same manner, if you look at Kenya, we have also borrowed a lot from the English language, our colonizers. There is a place in the lake basin known as Rodikopanyi. Have you ever heard of it? That is English language. But it sounds Luo, doesn't it? I speak some the Luo, so I can pronounce it almost like a Luo speaker, Rodikopanyi. Okay? It is road company. Road company. Okay? You go to the former western province, there is a place called Ikolomani, and you even have an Ikolomani constituency. It is English, gold mine. It is not Kiluya, it is gold mine. Okay? Now, you borrow a word, and then you localize it in terms of pronunciation. You go to Kiambu, there is another word, Kirigiti. It's a small town, Kirigiti. That is English also, cricket. Okay? <laughs> An old man or woman will not struggle pronouncing cricket. 
it is too much of a problem. Simply call it Kirigiti. Okay? And it becomes Gikuyo language. Okay? That's how languages grow. So the only thing we may lose in terms of our identity is our mother tongue. And there are many languages that have died, but languages are born every now and then. Now, when we come to building nationhood, our politicians have a responsibility also. And that responsibility is creating broad political coalitions. And our politicians, for me as a scholar, are doing their bit. I am very happy to have NASA, very happy to have Jubilee Party, because by coming together, they are killing many small parties that were simply locational parties, county parties, parties for an ethnic group, and creating broader coalitions that are now going to start creating ideologies as part of our identities. It is not going to happen in one generation, but they have started making good steps. We are moving somewhere. And please, read our history. Read other countries' history. Stop looking down upon yourself as a Kenyan. We have made major strides. For the last 50-something years, we have existed as a country. Major strides. Okay? To give you an example, the USA has been independent for close for over 250 years. That's a long time. More than five times the age of a dependent Kenya. And they only had their first woman presidential candidate last year. Am I right? And Kenya when did we have our first woman presidential candidate? In 1997. So who beats who? Please stop beating yourselves. You should be clapping for yourselves. You are doing great as Kenyans. We are doing great as Kenyans. We have traveled quite far. We have not reached our destination, but we have done extremely well. If you are in doubt, please... Just pay a visit to one of our neighboring countries. One. I will not tell you which one you select for yourself. You will come back to Kenya saying, Najivunia kuam Kenya. Sina vumilia kuam Kenya. Najivunia kuam Kenya. Now, we need to ask ourselves. Who else is responsible for helping us create our nationhood? We have identified two. Basically, every Kenyan changing the manner in which we think and look at our neighbors. The second one, the political class, creating broad political identities for us. Who else has the responsibility? The men and women sitting in this room have a lot of responsibilities. Each one of us in this room is here because we are leaders. I am a leader in the academic world. You are leaders in administration. And therefore you become part of what we call in uh, the academia, intelligentsia. We have a lot of responsibilities to help this country create nationhood. If you look at the majority of us in this room, chiefs, you will remember, as we were working on the constitution that is governing us today, there was an attempt to abolish the position of the chief. If politicians had their way, the chief's position was to be abolished. 
who fought for that office to remain in our constitution? Who fought? It's Mwananchi. Why? Because they know the value of your office. They know the value of your office. And therefore, they made a lot of noise and ensured that office is not abolished. For Wananchi to love that office, they know what influence you wield. They know what power you wield. And without you, things will fall apart in Kenya. And what that tells us as chiefs is that we can use that influence to help build Kenya's nationhood. If you look at the political landscape in Kenya, starting with the presidency, where you have the president and the deputy president, then you have the Senate, Parliament, the county government, including the parliaments of the county government, the salaries we pay for those politicians is for 2,738 elected officials. 2,738. Please bear that number in mind. Why? You will see on the next slide. If you look at the administration in Kenya, where at the very top you have the regional commissioners, and at the other end we have the assistant chiefs, we have many times over the number of politicians we pay salaries to, isn't it? We have a lot. For chiefs, we have more than 4,000 chiefs in Kenya. Compare that number to the number of politicians that we pay salaries to, 2,738. You are almost two times as many as the politicians. If you are to use your influence and your position for the good of Kenya in building nationhood, can we realize nationhood within the next 30 to 50 years? Can we? Yes, we can. We can. Because there are many of us. And we are influential where we come from. We can do it. And we shall do it if we set our mind to doing so. I am a scholar, and therefore, I belong to a category of people that will always have a word or two to say about theories. And the manner in which we formulate theories is simply by sitting down, probably in the dark, or in a room where you are not getting any disturbance at all and doing a lot of thinking. Asking yourselves questions and answering those questions. If somebody were to get into your mind at that time, they would think you are having a civil war in your head. Okay? Because you have this voice, you have this other voice, this other voice, all of them competing, and you are thinking about how to deal with situations that are facing your country. We can pick two theories, one of which is simply sitting down as we are sitting and doing nothing and waiting for nationhood to simply emerge. Will it ever emerge? Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Those of us who love literature may have read a play by Bertolt Brecht, Waiting for Godot. He waited for Godot, waited and waited. He never turned up. He never turned up. That is what we would be doing if we adopted that theory. The second theory is that of modernizing the manner in which we do our business modernization. 
and we have modernized quite a lot in Kenya. We haven't reached exactly where we want to be, but we have accomplished significantly enough. We are moving. Modernization means putting up, for example, modern infrastructure so that our chief here from Samburu who would have taken three or four days to come to Eldoret from Samburu now will travel here within hours. That is modernization. Also, creating politicized identities invented identities because of modernization. And part of that modernization is the way we are doing politics in Kenya today. Instead of remaining where we were 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, our politicians are now moving towards creating broader political coalitions. That is part of modernization. Moving away from small identities, moving away from narrow political identities to broader identities. Modernization also means engaging in social engineering. And part of what I'm doing in this presentation is social engineering encouraging us to think beyond the village, encouraging us to think beyond our ethnic identities, encouraging us to think beyond our counties and to look at each other as Kenyans. We occupy the same geographical space and none of us is going anywhere. Modernization means having better hospitals. Modernization means having better schools. And all of us can bear testimony to the wonderful work that our CS for Education, Dr. Matiangi, is undertaking. There is no doubt that he is moving us in the right direction. And please, as parents, when you have a child at home who asks very disturbing questions, very disturbing questions, don't call somebody to pray for them so that they stop asking those disturbing questions. Okay? As a parent, you have a responsibility to encourage that child to continue asking the disturbing questions. Because it is children who ask those disturbing questions that become people who are very important in solving our problems in society. They become thinkers. They lead us in terms of thought. Don't put them down. Encourage them to ask the questions. The questions may be awkward for you. For example, a neighbor of mine who is a close friend, who you probably see on TV if you watch Mahakama on citizen television, he acts judge. His name is Dennis Musioka. His daughter, when he was about five, six years old, and they were playing just outside the homestead with other kids, walks into the house. Musioka is there with his relatives, including his father and a few friends. And the girl walks to the father and loudly asks the father, Dad, what is masturbation? Many of us would simply look down, isn't it? I have even seen a few chiefs taking a very deep breath. Okay? Do you answer that question or you refuse to answer it? If you refuse to answer that question, another child will answer your daughter's question. Okay? And they will answer that question practically. 
on a 5 to 6 year old child okay when we get those kinds of questions i am in the academy and i'm dealing with young people they are troubled because we have not been paying attention to them and particularly our sons they have not been we have not as parents been paying attention to them to give you an example on a research that i'm conducting one young man at the university tells me this as i was growing up my father always would sit me down and tell me that car you see outside there and this house they belong to me okay they belong to me and he never moved beyond there so the young man when he started working where does he take his salary he makes it available for entertainment with his friends for many months for many months his salary was simply for entertaining others and i ask him why and he tells me my father never sat me down to advise me on what you do with your salary okay the rent of failure something could have been done to make sure that the young man is advised that when you earn 5000 shillings you must keep aside 10% of that and i'm particularly happy with mr kajumbi's statement i saw him here he has left he has he has walked out i was particularly happy with him when he said to us chiefs and not just chiefs because everybody here is also a member of this audience will hunt that we must think about our retirement we must think about our retirement people don't become rich because they steal they become rich because they learn from very early on to make their shilling work for them let me give a simple example because it is part of nationhood building if you are earning 10000 shillings at the end of the month and the first place you stop in is a bar to buy tasca or to buy senator or whatever it is that you take who are you paying the first 2000 shillings to not to yourself not to your family you are paying it to a business person ulichoka hiyo siku yote ndio umpatie pesa so the business person will happily collect the money and that money you have paid 2000 shillings for your alcohol will trickle down to a shareholder at East African Breweries or Keroche that is the first person you have paid your money to and you drink yourself silly and the following morning when you go to urinate i will speak like an old man what you are urinating is very smelly urine you are even closing your nostrils okay that is what your 2000 shillings have become okay within hours then the next place you stop the next place you stop is nyama choma nyama choma pia itakuchoma itakuletea gout kula nyama choma lakini sio uzidi sana kidogo tu kiasi okay the next place you stop for a good number of men is your girlfriend okay huyo anampelekea kanyama na mkate na sukari lakini kwako nyumbani unaenda na ukali upeleke nyama unaenda na ukali okay now look at how you have spent your money okay 
At the same time, there is somebody who also earns 10,000 shillings. The first 2,000 shillings, they didn't take it to a bar. They kept it aside in a cooperative society. Okay? And every two months, they are saving 2,000 shillings with a cooperative society. At the end of the year, they have how many? 24,000 shillings. And you can borrow three times what you have invested in a cooperative society, which means you can borrow 72,000 shillings. Unanunua ngombe wawili, ndama wawili. Within a year, wanatoa maziwa. If you are selling 20 liters of milk at 35,000 shillings, how much are you getting at the end of the day? 700 shillings. Okay? 700 times 30, 21,000 shillings. 12 kumi. Ya kunulia ngombe dawa. Chumvi. Na kadhalika. Unaweka elfu kumi na moja. Iyo elfu kumi na moja, inakulipia loan elfu tatu, unabaki na elfu saba. Okay? Your money is starting to work for you. You are creating wealth for yourself and also for society. Okay? And at the same time as you are creating that wealth, it means because you are a chief, somebody has to be employed to take care of your cows. That is employment you have created. If there were 50 young men in the village who are idle, one man is no longer idle. If an assistant chief creates employment for another one, then you end up reducing the unemployment rate in the village. And when this happens, when we create wealth in this manner, we are modernizing our economy. And that modernization is extremely helpful because you are providing opportunities for others, not just for yourself. If you look at Kenya, we have Vision 2030. And Vision 2030 is our roadmap to modernization. Our roadmap to modernization. Building railways, fast speed railways, where once the SGR is completed, a young man living in Mombasa can work in Nairobi and go home the same day, within 24 hours. A young man who lives in Nairobi, or a young woman who lives in Nairobi, can get a contract in Mombasa for four hours, take the train from Nairobi to Mombasa, and come back the same day. Shortening distances, modernizing our economy. On the economic front, modernization is taking place. Nairobi is planned to be a financial capital of Kenya. The political capital of Kenya is planned to be where? Do you know? In Isiolo. That is where the political capital of Kenya will have to move once we realize the gains of Vision 2030. Okay? And for chiefs, please, tembea internet kidogo. So makitu kidogo ya Vision 2030. Ndiyo kubali kuelezea wanainchi kule tumetoka na kule tunaenda. Vision 2030 is not a political party's vision. It is a political, it is not a political party's vision. It is a vision for the government of Kenya, regardless of what political party forms government. So it is a vision that must be realized. We have committed to that as a country. On the political front, we are doing okay with the broader coalitions that we spoke about. The problem we have is with the social pillar. The social pillar. How do we look at each other? How do we identify each other? And that is what I have spent considerable part of my time addressing. Now, is what Kenya is trying to do new? No, it isn't. It isn't. 
if you have been keeping livestock and you want to become a potato farmer, it would be very stupid, very stupid to think you will create your own research unit within your BOMA in order to research the best potatoes to grow in your area. What you do is you visit potato farmers and learn from them. Kenya is learning from other countries how they have modernized in order to realize their nationhood. And a wonderful example of modernization is the country we know as France. France invested very heavily within a period of 70 years in their infrastructure. Building roads, connecting towns, shopping centers all over the country. So that a farmer in Eldoret who slaughters his cow, by slaughtering your cow, you have added value to your cow. When the cow was alive, you would probably have sold it for 30,000 shillings. But the moment it becomes meat, the moment it becomes meat, you will now sell it at 60,000 shillings. Somebody will buy wholesale from you at 55,000 shillings. You have made your 5,000 shillings, isn't it? Okay? And then that wholesaler will move that beef from here to another town and sell it for 60 or 65,000 shillings. They will not be selling a whole chunk of meat. They will simply be slicing it into one kilo or half kilos and packing it. A hotel owner will buy one kilo of meat from you and make 30 samosa out of it, or 50 samosa. And when they do so, they are also adding value. And that value addition is made possible because there is a road network that enables you to transport your meat from Eldoret to Nairobi within hours, not within days. You add value along the way. In so doing, in so doing, Everybody in that chain is benefiting and having some money in their pocket. Modernization also means faster monetary transactions like M-Pesa. If you look at a farmer in Eldoret, was in Gisho, if a farmer sold 100 bags of maize, where did that money go? It went into their bank account and the rest of it in their pocket. And a farmer would keep 10,000 shillings in their pocket for a very long time, even a month. Today, are you able to keep 10,000 shillings in your pocket? You can't. Why? When you get paid your allowance from here, for example, some of us may already have embezzled some money to our wives or husbands. Okay? They withdrew that money. Did they keep it in their pocket? No. The money went to the nearest shopkeeper. The shopkeeper paid a matatu person to bring some more goods for them. So there is faster movement of money within the economy. And the faster money moves within an economy, the more economic activities that economy has. And it is to the benefit of that economy. Okay? Now, modernization is something that is happening in Kenya. France invested in infrastructure, heavy investment. Kenya has been doing so. Modernization means having a relook at the education system. And we are doing that as Kenya, but not fully, because we have not made our history compulsory in Kenya. Without knowing where you are coming from, 
you can't know where you are exactly today and how far you have to travel in future. That is something that is lacking. We hope that with the changes that are taking place in the education sector, this will eventually come into being. The French also taught that history right from kindergarten to the university. Children who are in nursery school are taught history. And I am sure the communities you come from also teach your children in nursery school or that age of nursery school your history. The village history or the community history. And this is done through storytelling, through riddles, through song and dance. It takes place. And France did it. France colonized a huge chunk of Africa as part of becoming great. Kenya has no place to colonize. But we can derive a lot of greatness from sending our soldiers to Somalia to help stabilize that country. We can derive a lot of greatness as Kenyans from the fact that our soldiers have been in many places all over the world to stabilize the countries concerned. That is greatness. When somebody plays with a uniformed officer, they are really trying to stick their finger in the eye of the Kenyan nation. In a uniformed officer, including the chief, they are trying to prick the eye of the Kenyan nation, which is not something we can entertain. Now, when you look at the impact that modernization is having in Kenya and has been having over the last 50 years, it's immense. I just want to take your mind back, jog your memory back to photographs of Mze Jomo Kenyatta that were taken in the 1920s and 1930s. When you looked at his face, you noticed one feature. His upper teeth were protruding. They were out. Did you notice that? Okay. Now, you take photographs from any community in Kenya a hundred years ago, and they exist, some at the National Museums and others at the Kenya National Archives. That was a very common feature, protruding teeth. Every Kenyan community had that feature. If you look at the person sitting next to you, do they have that feature? Please do. Look at them. Do they have that feature? No, they don't. Where has it gone? Where has it gone? Okay? This is what has happened scientifically. As distances become shorter because of infrastructural projects or development of roads and other means of transport, you no longer marry from your village. You travel quite some distance, isn't it? You travel quite some distance. And you don't travel that long distance. I can't travel from Nairobi to come to us in Gishu to select a bride that has protruding teeth. I will invest my time and energy as, and resources in getting a very beautiful wife, isn't it? And in so doing, we kill off that trait that we see as an ugly trait, okay? Distances getting shorter, they also lead to modernization of our physical appearance. That is why the man sitting next to you is a handsome man. And the woman sitting next to you is a beautiful woman. Just look at them again, please. Okay? Okay? Now, that happens as, as, as things change in society. Now, there is what we call genetics. Chembe chembe za DNA. If we take your DNA, this gentleman's 
right here and we take the chairman's DNA and this lady's DNA and his DNA and the chief's DNA over there, Minika. If we collect your DNAs, we can't identify your ethnicity from your DNA. We cannot. Because ethnicity is not biological. It is cultural. And we learn culture from those who are older than us. Okay? If you take 1,000 members of the Kalenjin community and you study their genetic makeup, profile their genes, then you take their Bagusi community, 1,000 again, 1,000 from the Gikoyo community, another 1,000 from the Lua community, and you try to figure out differences, this is what you will notice. Among the 1,000 Kalenjin, there will be a lot of differences, significant differences, from the same ethnic group. Among the Luo, the same thing. Among the Abagusi, the same thing. Among the Gekoyo, the same thing. Okay? Within an ethnic group significant genetic variation, okay? But when you take the sum total of the 1,000 genetic profiles of the Kalenjin and compare that with the 1,000 genetic variation of the Abagusi, the differences decline, okay? You take the Abagusi 1000 genetic profiles together, compare those with 1000 genetic profiles of the Luo and the Gikoyo, the differences go down. Why? Because of intermarriages. Okay? Because of intermarriages. Genetically speaking, every ethnic group is highly mixed up. We are hybrid communities. All of us, without exception, we are hybrid communities. So please, can you say hello to the person next, sitting next to you and tell them, welcome to the hybrid community. Because that is what we are. We are a hybrid Kenya. And with that, with that, with that, let us purpose, decide purposely that we are going to create another identity for us as Kenyans and that identity psychologically has to be attuned to our thinking. That identity will be an identity that corresponds with the boundaries of the country we call Kenya. We are all Kenyans. Thank you very much. That was really good, isn't it? You know, there is a difference between uh, presentations are what way. That was a professor doing it, eh? The work that he enjoyed doing, eh? You know, he went so deep. Mbaka nikashindwa kumwambia malizia mapema. He took a whole hour without me noticing that time in leisure. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Uh, that was really good, very informative. And I'm from a hybrid community. Uh, you were saying that people transpass through borders and uh, to get the most beautiful women. Some of us have transversed long distances to get the best men. <laughs> and me, I managed to get one from Mojawenu <laughs> of pastoralist, from pastoralist communities. Mojawenu. 
So thank you, Professor. It's true. Uh, the intermarriages has done us quite good because we have actually managed to live as Kenyans. And it is not a, uh, a negative thing. It's a positive thing. Uh, although our children now tell us that they don't belong into tribes. In fact, they are Kenyans. And I think that is a very good thing. Uh, so the next presenter will be Buanandegua. And uh, uh, he's from NCTC. And he will be able to take us through a session whereby he will be able to know your roles uh, in encountering uh, violent extremism in relation to citizen participation. Karibu Buanandegua. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. The stakes have been set so high by Professor and that is now the danger of presenting after qualifying people like him. Thank you, Professor. But uh, uh, sitting there, I've learned a lot, and uh, he has really made the way for me that we need to have unity of purpose as Kenyans. So the roadmap for what I'm going to talk about basically has been set by Professor that we need to be a people that have identity as Kenyans, governed by the jurisdiction of the borders that describe what Kenya is. My name is Jeremy Mogweri Andegwa from National Counterterrorism Center. The business we do, because I know I won't enjoy the luxury of one hour like professor, I have less than that a minute to communicate this and uh, my business is discussing with you issues of uh, countering terrorism has anyone of you ever heard about terrorism before is it within the boundaries of kenya oh so you know thank you uh i want to start by telling you what consists this National Counterterrorism Center in a nutshell. National Counterterrorism Center was created after realizing what you already know, that we have a phenomena to fight in the world. It's not about Kenya, it's not about the region, it's about all of us in the universe. The UN Security Council realized this, after the U.S. was hit in 2000 and uh, which year was that? 2000? 2000? Diverse answers. When the U.S. was hit, not Kenya, they realized that even the superpowers can have their share. And what did they do? They recognized that every individual country independently should go and articulate a plan on how we are going to fight terrorism. And that's when they came up with a plan. That UN resolution said that every individual country should go back there and articulate a plan. So they did, and they came up with a strategy. That is what brought about the creation of National Counterterrorism Center. We earned ours informed by the incidences you are talking about, 1998 Cooperative House, named them, so many incidences. In 2003, the government created the National Counterterrorism Center, but 10 years later, 2014, it was hankered in the Constitution. So just like Professor, I have a legal mandate standing before you today and discussing these things with authority. So that is what that first slide talk about. Then, what mandate do we have? Because uh, if we are creation by the Constitution, then we must have a mandate that makes you people make the checks and balances. You ask us, what is this that you are able to do? 
we are coordinating agency. Whom do we coordinate? Agencies within this country. We create awareness. Awareness to who? Like I'm doing now. We come here, we hear you. We articulate the plan by the government. We tell you what the government have been able to do because that is what you stand for. We also do uh, issues of evaluating uh, government and other agencies to provide security certification to aviation schools. I'm talking about the very last bullet there. Why about aviation schools? Why do we care about aviation schools? What happened September 11? You remember? How was the U.S. hit? Walipigwa kutoka wapi? Kutoka nju. So the business of uh, evaluating uh, aviation schools again became the concern of the government. Uh, when that plan to hit U.S. was being articulated, people went to aviation schools within... Uh, the station is... Umetoka... Uh, in Aitwaja Sikuizi, Kata, uh, location. Location Yako Negani? Capital Lock, Iko Pandagani, Uko? Iko police station within that location. Akuna, Koivo Ni Muko Namnayotu. Mukiva Mu, Akuna Mutu and Aokoa. Akuna? Raya. Munaweza Jisa India Nanini? Akuna, Mushale. This story is not a story that 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 is Atakuja kujaribu nyinyi not that funding pesa ambazo ujui zinatoka wapi zimekuja kwa kijiji yenu unaona vijana the youth mavazi wanavaa mapikipiki wanaenda nazo na zijanunuliwa na baba funding football clubs zenye tuna embrace vitu ya bule inakuja sana fazu alitumia hiyo aliishi pale na akaoa na akakaa na watu lakini watu wakujua until wakati alishikwa paka watu wanasema hapana huyu ni shemeji yetu be careful acquiring supplies siku ile mtapigwa vitu italetwa muziko ujui inatoka wapi ujui inakuja na nani suspicious people who don't belong watu si yenu amekuja kutembea chief uliza uliza mtu amekuja kwa mlango wetu wale wageni ni kina nani uzuri unakuanga invited kwa those sessions you need to do that Deploying, assisting, and betting, or even doing dry lands. Hizo ni vitu ambazo zinaweza ukuongoza. And then, this is not a war that you can win alone. It is teamwork. It is teamwork. And please don't be the loose link. Kama ni wewe chief, please do your work. If you don't do it, if you become the loose link, na zerikali na kutagemea, oh, tutachapwa. Tutapigwa. Um, I don't have time to play that. It's a creep. But then some of the challenges that deter us from achieving those mitigating efforts are corruption. We pewa kitu chukua. Vitu isipita ile nje inatakikana. We ni moja yao. Integrity imefunzo hapa chapter 6. Nilisikia ukiambiwa abide kwa hiyo. Iko na guidelines zake. Protect jealously the fabric of this country because we don't have any other. Uganda si kwetu, ile ingine si yetu, hapa ndiyo kwetu. Integrity. Patriotism, be a patriot, a real one. Kwa sababu, you don't have any option. Si yao ni makastoma enu? Hmm, wale wako nagali wanajua vile wanafanyanga. Dio wapite. Magali natumika na ile njia si yo Lack of, of awareness. Ile watu wajapitia maneno kama hii tumeongea, they have that gap. Awajaweza kuwasiriana ndiyo wajue what is supposed to be done. You are now different. Uh, and lastly, I list the case. Nimemaliza. 
but uh, tuendelee kungangana mimi najua we ukuwa unajua na sasa umejua si ndio go and light those other candles there you are potential people thank you thank you bwana ndegwa that was a good one isn't it though it's a very sensitive topic tumpigie tena makofi thank you so very much at least now chiefs know that they, they are standard operating duties what they are supposed to to do but we'll be able to have also learners uh, after lunch who will actually be able to tell us the the tells tell tells uh, if you want to know a terrorist what are the characteristics of a terrorist the identification how can you be able to identify that this person is a terrorist so Uh, I think we have our chairman and he want to panel bit uh, something so we will allow him to to do that for only five minutes then we can call Maranga to finish the session with us so that you can break for lunch thank you chairman thank you thank you commander wetu wa leo is everything going on well Are you still being helped? Yes. Is your location going to be better because you came this morning? Yes. God bless that yes. Now, may I just back one area or two or three in those few minutes that uh, purity as in has given. One Al Shabab is active in your location. The, when they start the, the first uh, commander, the first uh, secretary general, the late one, he said hiyo vita yao itashid, itashidana kwa sababu ya mambo matatu. One where they attack they cause maximum pain maximum injury and number two, they cause maximum fear and number three, in order to carry that agenda forward they will use the kenyan gallipo media to cause maximum publicity mwepata It is at the public publicity that I want to caution you. You are all on this phone. Avoid escalating any report you get of them succeeding for hitting us somewhere or hitting another area. Avoid escalating it. And know that that is the agenda. He has said if you carry that agenda, if you you go like that Should I should give you a good example. When uh, Mombasa police station uh, had three girls who, who went to interfere with it. One of the media houses ilikuwa inaweka hapa chini uh, breaking news, breaking news. What was the result? Our we lost millions of shillings on cancellations. Breaking news, a police station attacked by terrorists. A police station ni wasichana watatu. We failed as Kenyans because wale wasiana watatu tuliambiwa walikuwa six girls staying with one man na wananchi wanaona they saw they did not say they heard they did not say they suspected they did not say therefore it is we who feel the citizens that's why you are here to help the citizen take over but when you look at that galibo the last one so that when you get breaking news terrorism nini 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 please kill that story because you are carrying the agenda of that person the al shabab number two. tumeambiwa that we work with the uh, the national counter terrorism on a lot of areas in transmitting to you correct information in your location they are radicalizing and sometimes they are using phones they will go to mtoto wenu ambaye anasomea university fulani hasa the science based medicine and so forth 
wanamuonyesha hiyo mambo mbaya mwishowe you see the changes in certain kids please tell your citizens at the family level to be alert security is the joint mandate of everybody and the first test of that security the president said is what vigilance transmit vigilance to every family unit in your location it is your success when you mobilize each family each family unit that the whole country becomes safer where mtoto ame umeona amebadilika na utaambiwa na liners this afternoon please tell the parents the solution is to report to help that child report the child ukifiny ukificha ataenda extreme na utafika pahali mbaya sana one time a nod man told me of the way a neighbor aliambiwa ni muislamu wewe vile ulioa mamangu haikuwa ya kiislamu and you must correct it la sivyo i'll help god in finishing you mamangu hakuolewa kwa jia nzuri si unaona ni fake kiislamu <coughs> fake kiislamu mtoto hawezi kufanya namna hiyo lakini amepewa itikadi mbaya so tell the families ambao iko na hiyo tatizo report the converse of it kuna mtoto ambaye alienda mlisikia mlisoma kwa magazeti the other day wanaua watoto yetu wanasema wanakuwa majesusi ya Kenya si wanaua watoto yetu kule na sivyo watoto wetu wanaenda kuwa na KDF na Amazon forces tunapoteza mtoto akirudi <coughs> na uambiwe excuse me na uambiwe ya kwamba ama mnaona yule mtoto ambaye anatoka kwa shabab ni wanaita returnees ama wale ambao wametoka kule the solution kusaidia huyu mtoto ni tell the parents do what report so that huyo mtoto anashikwa kama mtoto yetu ambaye anasaidiwa until anakuwa nomo kwa sababu fikira zake alikuwa amepotezwa so the solution here is you tell those parents they did not contribute kwa huyo mtoto kwenda wapi si wawalipia wao sivyo so but the the key word is let the parents report let the neighbor report hata ile mulika anasema mtoto huyu alikuwa amepotea kwa muda <coughs> tabia zake ni utaambiwa la siri please report report so that government ni mto, ni sani ya kia Kenya this is our son isn't it is our daughter unasaidia anafanya nini anasaidiwa finally is to encourage you not to profile watu kesho ni friday unaona dugu zetu waislamu wanavaa kanzo isn't it wakati mwingine nakofia kama vile navaa let's reduce hiyo mambo ya kuona muislamu ni terrorist in fact wale ambao the 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 they are the terrorist real wana behave kwa jenzuri sana kwako kwa kanisa nini ni lakini yuko na aje daigine lakini uki, ukiangalia the signs and symptoms ali alikuambia uambie wananchi wanakuwa alert and it doesn't do any harm reporting akiangaliwa na na, na maofisa ambao ni trained wataona huyu kijana si mbaya ni, ni akili yake iko labda he argues uh, too much or he is over withdrawn or tabia yoyote but let's avoid profiling ya kufikiri ya kwamba yule ambaye anaweza kuwa ni adui ni yule ambaye ni wa dini ya Kiislamu i will tell you this last year a report came and they said 44% of the new recruits kwa al shabab kutoka within our country wana recruit kutoka kwa wakristo are we together kwa sababu hao wakristo hawasomi koran kwa hivyo akiambiwa kitu kidogo tu within aya moja ama mbili ya Quran anaona kama ni ukweli 
na Quran inatumia sana wasomi kwa, kwa finality of interpretation na isitoshe kwa sisi ambao ni wa Kristo kawaida tunafikiri kwa waislamu kuna kuna diocese kuna parish hakuna and a, 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 a mosque can be independent completely independent kwa hivyo hitikadi mbaya yaweza kuja inatoka pahali ambapo we hu, hujui avoid being suspicious and study a little more but the key thing is ukiona chochote ambacho unashuku please say it is no crime itakuwa regrettable one mama ambaye alisema you know wale vijana ambao wali, wali attack university ya Garissa nilikuwa nimepata hiyo habari kwa ile nyumba lakini si kusema that woman feels very bad isn't it she feels very bad and encourage them your families your adults your people to get the habit of reporting hence you raise vigilance of your citizens because government says security is a joint uh, joint uh, mandate of everybody living in your location and the first test is vigilance of everybody living there and finally grassroots security is the foundation of our national security starting from where you are asante sana thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you chair i know you took my five minutes but you know i could not take the mic from you because that is an issue of insubordination <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know next time you will allow me because now the powers bestowed on me from you to command <laughs> there must be a there too isn't it so thank you so very much i now welcome uh, mr maranga to take us through the next session and you will take exactly 20 minutes karibu tumpigie makofi Thank you very much. <clears throat> Chairman CPS, members, facilitators, watawala. Na wasalimu wa mjambo. Mungu sawa mmechoka. Thank you so much. Incidentally tangu tuanze jana I sat down with the chairman akaongea maneno ya chief came with the RC akaongea maneno ya chief dr sang emmanuel imana nisikia vizuri sana mpaka atakuwekea wembo mwingine wakati ngombe imekuja vizuri vile wanaimba lakini bwana imana iko wembo mwingine ya merile moja anaitwa lotikori eh yeah. Inaiba roti kori kumbuka siku nyingine tulikokimbisha mpaka ukatoa vitu vingine wapi muturukana wapi wewe si muturukana wewe eh eh nyama saria ni nini wewe ufahamu kitu gani nyama saria ni kitu gani nyama saria eh aa wewe muturukana wewe Yani kikisi. Sawa. What do you call table bombs? Eh. Eh. Ah, uh, there is another name one. Niko siku tulia mkutano mwingine wanaimba. You know, see how they enjoy it. To create fear. Kwamba siku ile tulikukimbiza mpaka ukatoa table bombs. So the next time asikuje. Now somebody who knows Lord Tikori he lost her many sons Hey dio yo how many sons did he lose Nani anatoka lowe ngangi Wabire IDB How many sons walikuwa ya Lord Tikori How many sons? Yeah. Vijana ile morani ya gumu yakiwa. His own sons, yes. How many were killed? Ebusikia hiyo maneno. 
So chiefs, mnaona faida gani tunapata kwa hizi raids? Sasa zingine unapata political leader saying Nani? Waje tuonane mwanaume ni nani? Mwanaume ni nani kwa kumwaga damu? Anyway, that was on the, by the way. Kano Mugambi akacha akanyorosha ni mpaka mkaleta fimbo ya nyaya hapa. The chiefs talked about it, Professor Munene na ndego amemalizia saa hizi. Karibu animalizia lakini naona niko na kidogo to bite. <coughs> Now, tangu zamani the role of chiefs Naturally, it revolves around manana ya coordination, manana ya agriculture. And that's why we are coming in later on to see that the chief ya a very central, we grew a very central role ya ku coordinate manana yote. From the outset, remember where we come a chief is you are the president of your location. Just as the president, Uru Kenyatta, is the president of the Republic of Kenya. It's only that faida yako, location yako ni kidogo, lakini zero role zot. Unatimisa kwa wani wako. Ni kama sa president. Don't forget that one. The issue of uh, family frictions. Kama watu wanakuangana hapa, ni wewe tu. The issue of land disputes. Political issues. Health, human health and animal health. Manene ya njaa, chivu ni kazi yako, watu wako wakiwa na njaa, we si chivu kamili. You must plan ahead na coordinate kama iko family leave na ni mapema. Ndiyo watu watu wa siwiwe njaa. The issue of judiciary, mkata case. Things are happening, you have structures of elders, ni na nini, muna sauta watu mambo ingina. Hakuna, ya kuenda kutini, kuenda kufungwa, na unaendea u cause problems. The issue of war, very common. Because kama adui zamani, siku hizi kwa tag tuwe na adui, adui ya kitokea from an unknown news, wakati suwa kia siku wa sawa, si lazima upange vijana yako, vila watu wanachikinga. Na kuwa na hili angomu, unapiga pupu pupu, watu wakisikia hiyo, wanapotea mwistuni. I'm talking of the past, vile mambo ilikuwa, na there is no difference in atakani hivyo hivyo, lakini like those amadas inaendea kutoka. Other social activities like sports, ambayo ilikuwa na heta watu pamoja, cultural dances, ata wrestling, siku kama this area of the country, watu walikuwa na menyana mbaka mtu wanajulika na mtu fulani, ndia hili hata wakipindua mkonga apana shika chini. They used to happen. The chief, so to say, tangu zamani, ni mambo yote, na ataendea kuwa mambo yote ata leo. Except that singe muna legea, muna ansa kuwacha, agrikacha, ni kasi agrikacha. The person who will coordinate that person who agriculture, as I said earlier, bado itakuwa ni wewe. In fact, colonialists wakati wali ingia in this country, they raided on the chiefs of our natives to be able to approach them. Chief, ndi alikuwa huko. Waki ingia, ndi anawanyasha mambo hiko na mnagani. After independence, the founding father of the nation, President Jomo Kenyatta, mi nataka tena mudurukana niambie, Jomo Kenyata alikuwa na hitho nani? Wewe. Mtu wa kainuko. Alikuwa na hitho nani? Si alifunga kapengulia. Johnson Kamau. Mwa muna saau. He adopted the same. Agriculture. Manana ya achai. The issue of environment. You could see mapicha here. Zamana hata alikuwa kwa kale. Nda wakipepa. Boulders. Huko ukambani. Ujari usuya mwenyoko ya udongo. Animal health and movement. If there was an outburst of some disease, iyo ndia likuwe inatumika. Disease monitoring, if I mean the same thing. And again, in 1983, the same was enhanced during the focus for rural development. I remember, there's a time I was attending an interview with Public Service Commission, and one of the main questions in Iguani Meulizwa, the role of the chief. Do you think the chiefs act? Itatolewa. Mine kakumbuka na kisema chivu wa kitolewa, tutakuwa na mnagani. Haka niyabia kumbuka, is the pipeline, na is the police that inataka itolewe, so that watu wakai nini. I remember the chivu yangu walikuwa na hitu wa ngoko. I remember, I can't forget him, he played a very pivotal role in the tea industry. Alikuwa na kuja na shika ngombe, anaenda na ayo. Mpata kwa musibi ya ngini ya kamelewa hivi kidogo. Jioni yaka anakuja marihitu kutoka manene ya chai ya mnamutumia chukua. 
Siku hiyo utasikia oni imepewa aende kuchukua michai. And in that way chai ilikuwa planted in that location. Hakuna mambo kuuliza mingi atalikuwa nani because of the chief's act. So I gave that example um, we in our place hata mimi mwenyewe nimesoma sawa I, I don't think that is going to work. Waka smile nikaona nimefaulu. Si nilitetea nini? Yaani amwezi kunipigia kofi. Chiefs take your job very seriously and uh, go back and take your right to position. I remember the, the, the RC was talking about. And I don't know why it is taking wrong. Ile kidogo kati mnaenda karibu mmebewe matawi. Aisha aisha. Ichi kazi ya chief hakuna mahali inaenda. Hata usaidie raia aseme wewe chief kama wengine umekamatana asione kama ni mtu mwingine. Uniforms itakusaidia. Learn to be visible. Kama wewe ni chifu, you are very careless. Ukitoka hiyo umefaa long, zip uko open. Unatembea tu. Sasa wewe ni chifu kweli? Wewe ni senge? Secure dressing. That's what we are talking about. People should take you on a way ni chifu. And there's something very common. Iko manguo zimekuja. Ati chifu wewe ndi umefaa t-shirt. My dress is my choice. Wewe, unakosa nguo? You know I'm saying this way around so that you are well turned out so that when you are going to coordinate other government agencies, they say who you need chief. Kama wanaenda kama ni kwa polisi, ukitokea huko report office wanaenda kuona usi nambia, chief wewe funga sipi yako? Already, wewe, si hiko manena hiko kasoro kidogo? Alabu wewe ndiyo una t-shirt, sport pesa. Hai? wanu wa promote banana sport pesa sengenge ni ngombe na ngombe inakuwa inaandikwa bold sasa wewe umekuwa ngombe tena mind is not just a dress because it's going to talk about you and how you are trust condom man you dam sasa wewe tena wewe unaenda kucheza football ni timu unaanza hmm taska imara kama simba we see them it is for power Raira tosha, kama higo t-shirt. Ah, we chief. Na, that is, kwa, siyo kwa mba unasaidi politically, lakini unana nikanguwa na faa tu, because you are not conscious about what you are doing. Na leo meambiwa ingine, the radical boys. Nde wali wambia hapa. Don't just dress because ni nguo. Remember, it will reflect you here negatively. Be above board. Issues kama mzoza ya families. You find uh, some lady ya mespiwa silapu mahali, anakimbiria wewe. Wakata ya naingia, unamuona kwa mbali, kumbe yu wavri ya naapetite. Yako na shida. Meguja meingia. Habia chief, jana bado lala, adi nipiga mpaka ni lala kwa faranda. Alawe chief, kitu unamambia, lakina uwe, weja nikulisa. With all this beauty, iu mtu mwurikutana wapi. Are you solving that problem? Na si inafanyika? Sasa ni chivu na mnaani utabeba ngabi location yago? What I'm saying is that the chief you should stand above board unaleta kama hugo na hape taite na mnaio unaleta waze wana kusaidia to lower it so that you can sort out that case pa moja. Sindio? How do we talk? Chief, maongo yetu tukia baby in a social place maybe somebody ya meleta case Mtu hati ya maliza story, wanamichibu na wewe, sasa hibi, sichivu ni mtu anasikiza. Anasikiza kama hako na waze wengine hapo, anawacha hata wa-respond pole pole, ajia wizi domuiko mbali mbali, utapatha direction. At the end of the day, who takes the credit? Sinichivu? Aha, karibu naelekea mulo. Chivu wana kula na mnagani? Ukienda hile laino ya haka kisaani, kama ni self-service. Wewe unawewa mbaka mulima hapana wana kicho yako hiku wabi? Haa, anawuliza. Na unajua muna juwana. Mundu wengine kia karibu wana hakina hii chiu yuko na mlakani. Haa? What I'm talking that everything we do in life, we have to be very security conscious and that we have an image to create mundu wana wana wewe na mlakani. Talk about loving. Chiefs, you know, check in style. 
Wewe ni habari mpaka mtu anaona ile mema mlikuwa anaambiwa. Si unacheka kingwani hilo ha unamalizia hapo. Wacha wengine wacheke. Si naona you have that self control you are talking about. How about dancing? Si wigo si ana dance. Muka Abel toilet si ndio? Friday itaingia, eh? Si basi wewe unaenda ukifanya fanya miguu na mnaima hali watu wanadansi unakanyanganya watu. 